How are you all doing this morning? Doing all right. Um, do you have, have any questions regarding uh, the homework for parallel RLC circuits or series RLC circuits? Or you, have you had a chance to look at any of that stuff yet? Um, I actually do have a question for problem three for the um, uh, homework six. Homework six, problem three. All right, let me pull that up. Alrighty. Um, any specific question or you want me to just kind of work our way through it? Um, so specifically at V zero plus, okay. uh, I have it, I, ha I think I have it set up right. I'm just not sure what to do. All right. So at T is equal to zero plus, let me, So if t is equal to zero plus, um, well, first we're going to have to look at it at t is equal to zero minus to figure out exactly what's going on at t is equal to zero plus. So let's do that real quick. Um, so this is homework six, number three. Part B, at t is equal to zero minus, our switch is closed at B. So we have this. Circuit from our capacitor. This is a fifty ohm resistor. I R at zero minus zero minus. Zero minus. Um, so we can see by inspection that V at zero minus is going to be zero volts um, because it's the voltage drop over uh, the short circuit that it's in parallel with and the voltage drop over short circuit is always zero. Then we can also see that our, let's see, resistor current is going to be zero amps because all of the two amps is going to flow through the short circuit. Our inductor current, oh my gosh, the computer's making so much noise today. Zero minus will be two amps and our capacitor current at zero minus will be zero amps. Um, so is everybody okay with the results of this analysis? Alrighty, so at T is equal to zero plus, our switch is now closed at position A. So we are going to have, here's that short, here's our two amp source. Here's our resistor. Our capacitor had zero volts across it. Um, and since the voltage drop over capacitor cannot change abruptly, that means it still has zero volts across it, so it must be a short circuit. And our inductor had a current of two amps falling through it, going down direction. So there you go. 
Here is I C of zero plus. Here's I L at zero plus. Um, sorry to interrupt, but uh, I don't know if anyone else heard that, but your microphone just went like crazy for a second there. Okay, sorry. Um, so I was just defining all of my currents at zero plus. I don't know why my mic went berserk. Here is V at zero plus. And so our voltage cannot have changed abruptly. So it must be zero volts. Our inductor current cannot have changed abruptly. So it must still be two amps. Our resistor current, what's that gonna be? Zero. Zero amps. And our capacitor current, what is that going to be? Should be negative two. Okay, that's what I was confused about. I didn't know what happened to the capacitor. Yeah, so if the capacitor has a, a fixed voltage of zero volts, then you could put a zero volt source in, but that's the same thing as a short circuit. Yeah, I was confused. I didn't know if it was like a short circuit or an open circuit. Yeah. <clears throat> no, open circuit means that the, no, the current is zero and any amount of voltage that appear, that needs to appear across it can. Short circuit means the voltage is zero and any amount of current that needs to flow through it can. So we had a fixed zero voltage, so that's why we use a short. All right, that's what I was confused about. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions regarding homework? Uh, well, any of the homeworks at this point, really? I've got a question on homework seven. Homework seven, all righty. Let me. What is your question, Cord? It's mostly general, but um, for most of the circuits I've been looking at, uh, calculating everything in here, um, all of them are underdamped. I didn't know if that was correct or not, though. I just wanted to uh, check and see if anybody else had gotten underdamped for all of them as well. So let's see. Uh, because in homework seven, they are series RLC circuits. Um, that means that alpha is going to be R over 2L, if I'm remembering stuff from the uh, sheet correctly. So our first problem, we have two uh, problem two, two ohms divided by two times 0 0.25. So alpha for problem two, uh, alpha is four. Omega naught is always one divided by square root of LC, so 0 0.2 times 0 0.25. Two, blah, blah, blah. So that one is definitely under damped for problem three. We have two divided by one. So alpha is equal to one. Omega naught is that one is also under damped. Problem four, uh, it's gonna require some work to figure out what's going on with uh, the resistance of the circuit. So let's take a look at that guy.
Right, so in problem four, give me just a moment to draw this. All right, so this is problem four, and we'll work part A, where we try to find the equivalent resistance to the circuit during the transit condition, and then use that to determine alpha and omega naught and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so, Dr. Hartman? Yes. Before you go too far, I think you should- There's a one ohm resistor. Yep. Thank you. Alrighty. So during the transient condition, that means after the switch has moved from position A to position B, what our circuit looks like is this. So we have a one ohm resistor in parallel with a three ohm resistor. Here is our capacitor. Here's our inductor. Here's our dependent source. 1F, 3H, and this is only A. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're trying to find the equivalent resistance as seen by the capacitance and the inductance. Um, so that's the same as the Thevenin resistance, where we pull those two guys out. So I'm going to redraw that again um, to kind of hopefully illustrate a little bit better what we're looking for. So this is what uh, the equivalent resistance that we're trying to find. Uh, this is our circuit for doing that. Um, we've taken our inductor and capacitor out because we don't want those to influence our resistance calculations. Um, we can see that there are no um, independent sources. So we have a simple network uh, with two resistors and a dependent voltage source. So how do we find the equivalent resistance of a independent source free network like this? Use a test source. Use a test source. Okay. Um, so what kind of test source should I use? Personally, I used a one amp test source. A one amp test source. Alrighty. And that means we're going to be trying to find this voltage V test uh, positive polarity on top. 
All righty. So, um, let's use nodal analysis. I'm going to put my ground right here. So this is going to be B1. This is going to be B2. Those are my only two nodes that aren't ground, right? I have that big top node, bottom node to the left-hand side of the source, and the bottom node to the right-hand side of the source. And I chose the one on the right-hand side to be ground. Um, so let's see. I know that V2 is negative 2 times IA. And I know that, let's see, we're going to have V1 minus V2 over 1 ohm plus V1 minus V2 over 3 ohms minus 1 amp is equal to 0. 1, 2, 3 paths, yep. And IA is... V1 minus V2 over 3 ohms. So 3 equations, 3 unknowns. So let's see, so my first equation, I have a coefficient of 0 for V1. and then positive two for IA when I move that over to the left-hand side, zero constant. For my second equation, my coefficient for V1 is one over one, so that's just one and one third. My coefficient for V2 is negative one and negative one third. My coefficient for IA is zero. My constant term is one. And then this guy, let's see, I'm gonna have one third, negative one third, negative one, zero. So those are the results that I got. One fourth of an ohm. Because RTH is going to be V test divided by. One fourth over one is one. I don't know. I feel like that's. I don't know why, but jumping out at me, I, I thought this was supposed to be five fourths, but it's been a long time since I've worked this problem. Anybody see any mistakes or anything? Let's start there. Would the um, V2 to ground? not be minus minus 2 IA, so positive 2 IA? You are 100% correct there. Yep. Um, because of the polarity, it should be minus negative 2. So that would be plus. So that is going to change that guy to minus. Yeah. Yep, there we go, 5 fourths. Positive one half, positive one fourth. All right, thank you, Cord. One fourth. All right. So now that we know R, um, alpha is still R over twice L because it's a series circuit, and we can tell that it's series. Um, because we have our capacitor and inductor in series with the equivalent resistance. So that's
5 fourths divided by 2 times L is 3 Henry. 5 fourths. So this one is under damp too. So I guess I didn't pay enough attention and made all of them under damp. Okay, I just wanted to confirm because it was seeming really weird. They're all the same. I didn't know what I was doing. Nope, that uh, the, the math doesn't lie. I gotta pay more attention when I make out the homework sets. All right, any other questions? Let's see. So today what I had planned to talk about was Oh gosh, I hadn't put notes up for today. Okay, well I will have to do that. Uh, so today, I guess I just totally spaced out there. Um, so today what we were going to talk about uh, is uh, the total response of RLC circuits. So to that end, I will we'll work a problem together. Now we'll just make one up and hopefully it will not be a underdamped. So let's say that we have the following circuit. Um, in this circuit, the source is being added into um, what's happening, not taken out of it. So we no longer have a natural response problem. Um, so all this is going to do is it's going to slightly affect our response equations because we're going to have to take into account that this guy is going to settle to something that is not zero at t is equal to infinity. So in all our previous examples, the sources were taken out and we knew that the resistor would effectively convert all of the stored energy of either our capacitor and or the inductor into heat and everything would settle to a final value of zero. Now, um, this is not the case. It should be fairly obvious to see that at T is equal to infinity, we're gonna see that our capacitor voltage will be uh, non-zero. Um, so, this is a series RLC circuit, so we can calculate alpha pretty easily. It's going to be R over twice L, which in this case is going to be 5 over 4 amperes per second. Omega naught is going to be 1 over root LC, so that's going to be 1 over the square root of 2. 
Uh, so that's square root of two over two. Um, which is, let's see, square root of two, so that's 0 0.707 and some change, I believe. Yes, sir. So alpha is greater than omega naught, for sure, which means we have an overdamped system, All right? So at t is equal to zero minus, our switch is open, and so we have system that looks like this. And we could easily be able to see for sure that I at zero minus is definitely zero amps. Um, that means that VR at zero minus has to be zero volts because if no current is flowing through that branch and the voltage drop over the resistor can't be anything. VL at zero minus must be zero volts because it's the voltage drop over a short circuit. Um, you guys have any thoughts on DC? Say zero. It's going to be zero as well, right? So effectively, everything's going to be zero here. Um, and we could know that just by looking at it. If the um, capacitor and inductor were effectively never charged, they shouldn't have any voltage or current flowing through them. All righty. So at T is equal to zero plus, now our switch is going to be closed. Um, so let's see, the current flowing through our inductor was a zero amps of current. So it's going to look like an open circuit. The capacitor had zero volts across it, so it's going to look like a short circuit. So here we have VC at zero plus, here's VL at zero plus. This is a five ohm resistor. Here is VR at zero plus. And here's our current I at zero plus. So can we identify what any of these values are going to be? Like what's I at zero plus have to be. Zero amps. Right, because it's the current flowing through an inductor, it cannot have changed abruptly. Um, what about the voltage drop over the capacitor? That will remain zero volts as well. And zero volts, all right. So any voltage drop over our resistor? No, sir. Zero volts, why not? There's no current flowing through it. Yep, alrighty. And the voltage drop over our inductor. Yeah, negative 12 volts. Uh, so if we did KVL around that loop, we would have, ne uh, starting at the bottom left-hand corner, we have negative 12 volts plus VL is equal to zero. So VL has to be equal to positive 12 volts, right? Yes, here. Yes, Based on uh, polarities. Alrighty. Now 
we have at t is equal to infinity. So at t is equal to infinity is DC steady state. So our inductor is going to look like a short circuit and our capacitor is going to look like an open circuit. So let's see. I, that shouldn't be zero plus, that should be infinity. What's I at infinity going to equal to? Still zero. Still zero. What is VC at infinity going to equal to? 12 volts. VR at infinity will be zero volts. VL at infinity will be zero volts. Um, so let's solve for the capacitor voltage and the inductor current. So our goal here is to solve for VC of T and I of T. So which one do you guys want to solve for first? VC of T would be easier, right? Um, Technically, they'd both be just as easy, but in my opinion, VC of T is more useful, and let me explain why. I of T is the inductor current, but because this is a series RLC circuit, it is also the capacitor current. So if we know the capacitor voltage, we can e easily figure out what the capacitor current is because it requires the exact same steps. Whereas if we found I L of, or the, the inductor current directly, um, we could find the inductor voltage and then we would have to do KVL and some other work to figure out what the capacitor voltage would be. So VC of T here is going to give us the most useful information based on what we want. All right, so since our circuit is overdamped, that means that VC of T will be of the form A1E to the S1T plus A2E to the S2T plus VC at infinity. This is the only change that's going to occur in our um, analysis here. So we, we have some term uh, of what, the, what it's gonna settle to at infinity. Um, I guess we just take a moment to calculate S1 and S2. So S1 is negative alpha plus the square root of alpha squared minus omega naught squared. Let's go up here. So let's see, negative alpha plus the square root of alpha squared minus omega naught squared. Negative 0 0.219 and change per second. S2 is negative alpha minus alpha squared minus omega naught squared. negative 2.281 per second. All right, so VC at zero plus is going to settle to 
a1 e to the 0, so a1 times 1, plus a2 times 1, plus vc at infinity. Um, so this is going to give us the equation, let's see, a1 plus a2 is equal to vc at 0 plus minus vc at infinity. So VC at zero plus was zero volts. VC at infinity was 12 volts. So that zero minus 12 is negative 12 volts. So this is one equation. I of T is C dvc by dt. So that's going to be s1 a1 e to the s1 t plus s2 a2 e to the s2 t. And we're not going to have any infinity term because when we take the derivative of that constant value, it goes away. Um, i at 0 plus is then Sorry, this whole thing should be multiplied by a factor of C. C, S1, A1, plus S2, A2. So that's going to be 1 farad times negative 0 0.219 a1 plus negative 2.281 a2 is equal to i at 0 plus, which I believe was infinity. Yeah. Or should, i at 0 plus was 0, sorry. 0 amps. So that is equation 2. So, we have our two equations, we can solve them using a simple system solver. So we have 1a1, 1a2 is equal to negative 12, and then Yet A1 is equal to negative 13.276 volts, and A2 is equal to 1.276 volts. So from this, VC of T is negative 13.276 E to the negative. 0 0.219 plus 1.276 e to the minus 2.281 t plus 12 volts and i of t so we're going to have c times S1 times A1. We'll see is 1. So
multiplying S1 times A1, I get 2.910, e to the minus 0 0.219 T, multiplying S2 times A2. Get negative 2.910 e to the minus 2.281 t amps. And there we go. So, do these make sense with our initial conditions? So, VC at zero plus should be zero. So, negative 13.276 plus 1.276 is minus 12, plus 12 gives us zero. So everything's working out there at t is equal to zero plus, at t is equal to infinity. Um, our first term, the e to the minus blah, 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 is going to go to zero. So it's negative 13 times zero plus 1.276 times zero. So zero plus zero plus 12 is positive 12. So that makes sense. Uh, for i of t, at t is equal to zero, it should look like zero. So we have 2.910 times one minus 2.910 times one. So 2.91 minus 2.91 is zero. And at infinity, we have zero minus zero is equal to zero. So everything matches our uh, data points. Um, so any questions about this total response problem? All right, shouldn't be much of anything because it's the exact same thing you've been doing except for this one small change where you take into account what happens at t is equal to infinity in this one particular equation. Um, the next lecture that we're going to have, and I'll make sure to post uh, the notes and all that kind of good stuff for it, is on general RLC circuits. And so thus far, we've learned how to analyze parallel RLC circuits and series RLC circuits. Um, a general RLC circuit is one that is not series or parallel, right? So the overwhelming majority of uh, the circuits that you'll encounter in real life won't be simple single loop circuits or single node pair circuits. They're gonna be uh, a jumble of stuff. So we are going to learn how to solve any circuit as determine the response of any circuit that has two independent energy storage elements. So it might be one resistor, excuse me, one inductor, one capacitor, or two independent capacitors, or two independent inductors. Um, so I will make sure to actually post those notes for you guys and uh, see you on Thursday, unless anybody has anything else for me. I got something real quick. Yes. Could you perhaps model this problem on LT Spice? I've been having a heck of a time trying to do that. Uh, with the other homeworks? Sure. Um, let me force LC Spice. No. All right. I'm going to get my mouse going for this. Much easier. All right. So our circuit. We had a voltage source. And I'm also going to need This was a 12 volt source. Then we had five ohm resistor. We had a two Henry inductor, is that right? Or is it three? It's two. 
And a one paired capacitor, I believe. Wire all these bad boys up. Um, let's see our initial conditions. So actually before I do this, all right, so this is node 003. That's what I needed to see. Dot IC, the voltage at node three was, um, so at T is equal to zero plus our capacitor voltage was zero volts. Is that right? Yes, sir. And our inductor current was zero amps. So there's that. We're going to do a transient simulation. So let's see. Uh, the decay rate was minus two point something, blah, 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 per second. So let's see. I'm going to guess three seconds. And let's look at our capacitor voltage. Uh, three seconds wasn't long enough. seconds isn't long enough. Dang, 15 seconds. All right, let's do half a minute. Got to settle by then. All right, so it's settling at 12 volts. Um, all right, so let's add our trace. So we had negative 13 point what? Negative 13.276. 276 times EXP minus 0 0.218, is that right? What was S1? Negative 0.219. Plus 1.276 multiplied by the exponential of negative two point, what was uh, S2 please? Negative 2.281. Twelve. I believe you forget the uh, the second time for the second exponential. You are absolutely correct. Thank you. So they still look different, but let's notice that the scales are not the same. Right, so on the left hand side it's going from 0 to 13, and on the right hand side it's going from negative 1 to 12. So let's make them match. So 13 should go there, 0 should go here. 
and voila, they match. So, Cord. Sir. What am I doing that you are not doing that's making your simulations come out? Changing the questing scale on the right. Yes. That is a very, very common thing that you can have the absolutely correct answer, but it won't show up right if the scales don't match. So that is something that everybody needs to be paying attention to. Thanks, sir. No problem. Any other questions or anything? All right, nobody's saying anything, so um, I will get off my lazy butt and post your notes immediately so that I don't forget about it, and then I'll see you guys on Thursday. All right, have a good day. You too. You too.